benchmark cases are a very weird niche market. There aren't many cases to begin with, and those that are there serve very specific purposes, just potentially not the one that you are looking for. And then there are a ton of semi-DUI Amazon products that look like somebody just welded two pipes together and tried to sell it as a case. But not John's bow. Granted, John's bow did bring a ton of very weird looking cases onto the market, some looking very promising, mind you, but then there is this. This is the John's bow TB01. John's bow's attempt to create the perfect all-rounder benchmark case, and to be honest, they did come pretty damn close for our use case, but they are not quite there. Granted that this is a benchmark case, I'm not going to do the standard type of review where we, uh, what we used to do, like what ca can I fit in it, what can I not fit in it, like motherboard wise or anything, because this is a benchmark case. And I'm not going to talk about the airflow characteristics of a steel plate, it's, <laughs> it's open air. Instead, I want to solely focus on the stuff that you can or cannot do with this thing. For the compatibility, they did go a bit overboard on this one, in my opinion. The motherboard area is pretty much standard though. Everything from Mini ITX to EATX, everything is allowed, nothing to worry here. But it's below where I don't fully understand why they did what they did. We got two cages. One fits four 3.5 inch drives or two 2.5 inch drives, and the other one fits up to three 5 and a quarter inch drives. Who needs three DVD drives inside a benchmark case? Who is benchmarking DVD drives? Now, I do get that back in the day, there were quite a lot of these five inch water cooling reservoirs and maybe for that, it would make sense. However, if you do so, the reservoir would be sitting below the water block and maybe even below the pump or below the whole motherboard, which this is like a recipe for disaster. And while we are on the subject of not the best ideas, these radiator brackets or fan brackets, they are the best and the worst thing about this case. On the worst side, they are sitting below everything, so what exactly are you blowing air through? Benchmarking spinning artifacts and DVD drives? Sure, you could mount a radiator to that and call it a cooling feature, but then we are back to having the radiator below the motherboard, which just, and, and, and below the pump, which I, I, I just don't get that. Sure, if you take like a reservoir with a pump below and install it next to the motherboard, like standing here, you would have the essential part of the pump below a reservoir, which then makes sense again, but it's, it's I don't know, it, it doesn't, it, the journey is just weird if you go that way. But now let's get to the good stuff, because not only does each of these brackets support up to three 120s or three 140mm fans, or radiators for that matter, and they are also swivelable, but you can also remove the one which is sitting at the top side of the motherboard and reposition it to be below the motherboard, however, it is going to be kept in place using the PCIe brackets, and thus, it is going to be above the freaking motherboard. And this feature here, this alone, makes it one of the best benchmarking cases for our use case. Is It is so much more useful just because you can do this. This, this is exactly what I have been looking for. No risk of drying out the pump, no risk of having no water next to the water, nothing. There is no risk now anymore, great. This is awesome and as far as I know, it's pretty unique, but this makes the whole case an absolutely capable cooler benchmark case in a relatively small form factor. Even if this makes the leftover three fan spots even more useless than they were before, with this, we have the main feature of, of the case pretty much done. There is a few honorable mentions, like the USB 3.0 Type-A and Type-C port, as well as the combined audio in and out and the start button. The power supply is do whatever you want long, and the quality overall is really solid with big ass feet, and the metal pieces are between 0.8 and 1 mm thick. Everything seems flawless until here. However, there are two quite major drawbacks. First up, and that's really nagging on the highest level, 
a Nokia NF A fourteen industrial just fell off the table. Even if there are more than enough holes to pass the cables through the, or from the bottom to the top for like 99% of motherboard stuff, there is none planned for the audio port, which is usually sitting in the lower left corner of the motherboard. You could like, A, route the cable halfway across the case, which would work, but it would look really, really stupid, or you could use the hole right here, but then you would block like 360 AOs or radiators or the last fan, which doesn't make any sense either. Then you could do like a, a bit of useless crap, like route the cable through here and then through the bottom PCIe bracket. And, and it's, it's why didn't they just drill a hole there? But okay, I don't need a audio jack in a benchmark case and I don't think anybody does, but what I do care about is removing and installing motherboard backplates without the need to reinstall the whole motherboard again. Yeah, for LGA 1700, they will not come off. The hole underneath the motherboard is just not big enough. That one was very unfortunate for us because we bought this case for the very specific intention to use it exactly for that. Install a cooler after cooler after cooler, hence removing the backplate over and over and over again. But to be honest, we did solve the issue with some, uh, yeah, good old domestic violence. Apart from what I would call the major issue, there are also some minimal flaws that I just don't fully understand. Like, why are there five and a quarter inch bays to begin with? I would have preferred to scrap everything in the bottom, rotate the PSU with some holes underneath to make it breathe, and then make the whole thing lower, like half, which would just save metal, save space, save a lot of everything. I do get that then you would lose the 120mm fans here, but you could have repositioned them here and then you... I don't really get that, but I hope that at some point they will do like a next version of this, taking away a lot from the bottom and then just adding fan support in the top and then I'm fine. Another thing I don't fully understand is this screw, which is meant to uh, like secure the top fan brackets once you move them. Yeah, it just doesn't. It's flimsy as hell, and if I pull with minimal force, it will just let go. No matter how hard I drilled it in, it will just let go. It's... this doesn't work. On the list of I would have wished for things, we have uh, the motherboard rotation service. Like, not that it would change a lot, but drilling a few more holes into the top plate would allow to rotate the motherboard, and of course, with the PCIe bracket, so you need more holes on, on every side for that, but if, if they would have allowed to rotate the motherboard 360, it would give you the opportunity, for example, to, to have the radiator in another angle to the motherboard or to the water block, which that would have helped in, in a couple of instances, but mainly because how I am positioning the case when I'm benchmarking. So I have the PSU, to the monitor, which I can't really access, and therefore I have all the cables coming out here, because that's just how it needs to be on the table, and then the cables are hitting the monitor a bit, and that's quite annoying. And if I would have the possibility to rotate all of this, uh, like 90 degrees, I would have all the, the cables going to the wall, and still have fresh air. It, that would have been a nice feature. It's a good idea for an update. So where do we stand? We have unboxed the case on camera together and we've built the final system that you can see here in the same video. And since then I've benchmarked 10 AIOs in total and two air coolers. And after all of that, I love this thing. The case is not perfect, not, not by a long shot, but it was after we drilled that damn hole. But the bracket alone, this here alone, makes it perfect for for cooler benchmark, for standardized uh, cooler benchmarks where you mix air and water and, and this is really, really great for the use case. Granted, the backplate issue was huge, 
but it was solvable in the end. But I do expect if they ever bring out a like a TB02 that the hole will become bigger because yeah, I'm pretty sure LGA 1150 backplates would have fitted in there. Just not LGA 1700, but that's like the generation stuff that keeps happening every few years. The strength of the whole thing is really perfect for me. It, it doesn't bend, I, I can really kick it. it it is really solid and I need that type of case, especially for benchmarks. Only the bracket is a bit flimsy, but I mean, it's that's the cost of having this feature where this is movable. So I'm, I'm kind of fine with that, but it could have been a bit stronger. So as far as my time span of about three weeks or three and a half weeks with this case are concerned, it is really perfect for coolers in general, at least for our use case. It is very good for for example for uh, gpu and cpu and motherboard testing because you know, it's an open bench table but it's, it's hard to fail on that front but for coolers it did strike a lot of points for some freaking reason it also is good for three and a half and five and a quarter drive benchmarks for the one person who still does that but okay however i really hope that john spo updates this case in, in some not too distant future, making the hole bigger, make the motor, motherboard rotatable, fix whatever is wrong with the screw, and make the fan brackets like half a millimeter stick out just so that it doesn't bend like this. And make the hinges a bit stronger because now I can because of the tubes, but if you have like a 280 red on there, it will it will flex down. It's It's not that strong. And once they do all of that, I guess it would be like the best benchmarking case that I could imagine. But okay, this should be all for Johnspo and their TB01. At this point, I would have loved to read you a craptastic product description, but goddamn, there is nothing, not a single word. Johnspo said literally zero about this case. There is there isn't even a quote, not not even a description. And I, and I still bought it, and I really don't regret it. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to write our own craptastic product description and publish it on Johnspo's website. If Johnspo allows us to publish a product description for them, it's going to be the most adjective-rich text anybody has ever read. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Arctic P12 Max. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.